There is a unique job fair getting underway in Toronto in just about three and a half hours aimed at helping transgender people overcome the barriers they often face in finding work. Biko Buda is organizing the event. She herself, a transgender woman, inspired by her own struggle to get a job when she arrived here in Canada back in 2006. She's my guest in studio this morning, and great to see you. Congratulations. Thank you for having me. I, I said it's a unique job fair. It's believed to be the first in Canada, so an important day for you. Who do you think is going to be attending the job fair today? Well, we have such remarkable marquee companies. We have TIFF, who's also a host, TD, Indigo. We have Apple, the Canadian Armed Forces, Parks Canada, Durham School Board, Correctional Services. And on and on, 19 different employers, mm -hmm. all looking to hire within the transgender community. Yes, we've created a space where these kinds of employers will be looking to hire, you know, trans talent in a space free of discrimination and bias. Now, what does that tell you about attitudes and perspectives and openness right now? It tells me that, you know, the zeitgeist of the times is that uh, our moment is now. You know, we have to seize the moment and run with it. Times are changing. It's a whole new generation. The future looks bright for trans people. Well, listen, I hope it is a different picture in the future than what even some surveys have been uh, conducted within the trans community. Bring this up because talk with me about this. Trans Pulse did a survey that found that 71% of trans people in Ontario have at least some college or university education, and yet 50% of trans people in Ontario earn $15,000 a year or less, despite those educational credentials. What is the reality for jobs for, for people in, a, in the province, yeah. or generally? Those numbers are staggering because, in essence, you're saying we're the smartest in the group, but then we're the lowest paid, which doesn't fit into the whole capitalism structure because if you do good, you're supposed to like make the most money. But I think it stems from when the gay liberation movement began in uh, Stonewall in 1969, mm -hmm. when trans... Down in New York, yes. Yeah, trans people threw the first brick igniting the gay liberation movement, thereby propelling all the LGBT people into the track of, you know, gay liberation, except trans people were left behind. And my best evidence is how poorly we're reflected in the employment today. And why is that? Why are have... You're helping to change that yeah, with the job fair, yeah. but why have employers been traditionally reluctant to hire? Well, I think the systemic changes, routine humiliations, transphobia is still rampant. You know, we say we are against transphobia as a society, but it's ingrained in our culture. And you can see it based on the routine humiliations that trans people experience every single day. You arrived in Canada as a refugee because you left your home, Mombasa in Kenya, uh, when you realized when you were going to go, when you were coming out as a trans woman. What did you face when you were looking for work? Well, for me, I feel like I have nine years of post-secondary education. Mm -hmm. I'm smart. I'm certified in so many things. I, one, one summer, I applied for... I, I did 30 resumes and all entry-level positions. I wasn't looking for anything administrative, all part-time. I never got a call back from any one of them. Really? And, you know, it was then that I decided maybe I need to throw myself my own job fair. And look, in the process, my community benefited. Although, interestingly, not everyone in the community is totally behind it. There has been some strong backlash that you've included and invited the Canadian forces, yes. given the violence of the past, given the historic uh, oppression and persecution of trans people within the military. How do you answer the critics who say they shouldn't be at your job fair? Well, for starters, the Canadian forces didn't... There have been many companies who wanted to come to trans workforce. Some have been begging us to come, and we don't have any room. The Canadian Forces, I actually invited them to come to my job fair. Why? Well, my grandfather, he passed away, was uh, a major general in the Kenya Navy, and I felt like it would have been so great to honor his memory. And so when I invited the Canadian Forces, um, actually, the Minister of National Defense is the one who wrote me a letter and said the Canadian Armed Forces would be coming to trans workforce. And so, um, on a personal note, I was very happy. On another thing that people tend to forget, currently right now we have members in, this, in the military who are transgender. And 
you know, what about them? What about their honor? Let's not forget that they're members of the military currently serving, and we also need to honor, you know, their contributions to the country. So as I let you go on this day, you got to get the final things put together. It begins at 10 o'clock in the morning. First, what are you hoping to change? What are you hoping comes of today and this event? I'm hoping to shatter the last glass ceiling of the gay liberation movement, which is to include transgender, you know, transgender people in the workforce, inclusion, diversity, because inclusion is about culture and diversity is about people, which is why you can have, you know, a culture that's all about equality but be transphobic. So I'm hoping to shatter that today. Biko, thanks for coming in. Thank you for Before having you go me. and uh, organize that, and we'll have more coverage through the day here on CBC Thank News you. Network. A pleasure Thank to have you, you in. Thank you so much. Thanks.